start with our first talk, which is pH in soilless growing media. The pH in the soilless growing media is a crucial element for a successful production. Berger offers a growing media with a buffered pH and our quality control system guarantees that this pH is within a specific range upon reception. However, certain factors must be managed properly to make sure that the pH of the media remains optimal throughout the production. Certain factors being uh, water management, water quality, much of the pH change in a mix once it leaves the production line is in the hands of the grower. What is pH? What we call acidity is in fact the concentration of hydrogen ions, H ion. So the more hydrogen ions in the media, the more acidic. The more acidic, the pH goes down, okay? The pH hydrogen potential scale is used to measure the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. So, like I had mentioned before, the OH ions, which are hydroxyl ions, the more hydroxyl ions in the mix, the pH will rise. So in this solution, if we have, as you can see, more of the H as opposed to the OH ions, it will be high in hydrogen ions and then will cause an acidic reaction. The pH scale is logarithmic as hydrogen concentrations can greatly vary. So as you can see, with a very, very low concentration of hydrogen ions, you can see that the pH is even at 14. So as the hydrogen ions increase, as you see, the pH goes very low. Okay. A change of one pH unit is in fact a tenfold change in the concentration. Examples of basic acidic or basic solutions. Okay, if we want, we can look at battery acid. We can look at stomach acid. You can see how acidic that is. Lemon juice, cola. Then we get into what we call a neutral zone. pH is between five, six, and seven. Saliva, distilled water. Then we get to very basic solutions of soapy water. You would not think that oven cleaner and drain cleaner would be basic, but they are, and, and, and they're very, very basic as opposed to very acidic. Again, using the little red dots representing hydrogen ions, you can see the high concentration of the hydrogen. You can see the high concentration of the hydroxyl when the pH is high. In the middle, we pretty well have both hydrogen and hydroxyl sharing the same number. That's why it's, it's concerned neutral. The pH scale, on a uh, logarithmic scale, a small increase equals a big difference. This explains why seemingly small differences in pH can have a huge impact on the crop. So one drop, as you can see, is the big difference. It's 10 times more acidic. pH in growing mixes, peat and bark are naturally acidic. In growing mixes, lime is added to the, increase the pH to optimum ranges. Basically, the bark itself, at the, at prior to the decomposition, is alkaline or higher pH but after the composting it definitely is acidic and so we adjust the bark prior to putting it into the mix because we don't want really the component of peat and bark reacting against each other. Berger offers products with a wide array of pH ranges to ensure a stable pH. Berger goes through the extra step and uses two different types of lime, calcitic lime, also, as a calcium source, dolomitic lime. As organic materials have variable characteristics, Berger readjusts lime quantities before and during every production to ensure a uniform pH for consistent results in the greenhouse. So we see raw peat at three to four. Acid mixes at, uh, after the production. So a finished acid mix, labeled an acid mix, would be four two to four eight. 
We have a low pH mix, 47254. Our standard mix pH is 54 to 62. We have high pH mixes at 62 to 68. Okay. The reason for varying pH differences in our mixes is certain plants can grow only within a, a very specific range of pH and we try to accommodate the customer with making a mix that does fit into that, that pH range. Berger performs numerous pH tests during and after every growing media production directly at the plant to adjust the lime content in real time at the laboratory to ensure that the seven day incubated pH is still within quality standards. We want to make sure that the pH at the seven day is where we need it prior to shipping to ensure that the grower is actually starting at the target pH that we have indicated on, uh, uh, for that mix. Products won't be shipped before the pH has been tested. Products that are outside the pH range will be reclassified or reprocessed. The results of these tests are available to customers via a final inspection report, an FIR. Quality control. Here's an example of the actual FIR report. And again, it will indicate the seven day pH. Uh, which in this case is important because we're targeting that 5.8. You know, we might be targeting that 5.8 or down as low as 5.6, right up to 6.2, and it fits right with right in that mid-range. So it, it tells us that as it's leaving the production line, it is right where we should have it. So. Why is pH important? Living organisms are usually very sensitive to pH changes. For example, human blood, 7.5 to 7.4. Unit goes down, even just 0.1 pH in unit causes acidosis, which can lead to seizures and even coma. The soil pH influences nutrient avail availability. This is the most significant reason why we, we basically do monitor pH, is, is the, the fact that the lower the pH, Certain nutrients aren't available, the higher pH, other nutrients aren't available. And you can see here how they show you. So the very broad portion is showing where the highest amount of that element may be available. And uh, as manganese, as the pH gets up into 7.5 and 8, you can see that then the actual availability is quite limited. Okay. So it's being antagonized actually by the uptake is being antagonized by the pH level. The nutrients in the soil stay the same. They are just more or less available, soluble for plants depending on the pH. Within a variation of one pH unit, some nutrients may attain toxic concentrations or become completely unavailable. Example 5.5 to 6 versus a 4.5 to 5.0 manganese toxicity and calcium deficiency. So in this case, what they're saying is that the 5.5 five to 6 is we might have manganese toxicity. And once we get 4.5 to 5.0, then we're talking calcium deficiency. Why is pH important? Different species have distinct preferences and tolerances. Knowing the optimal pH range for these species you are growing is very important. In this case, you can see rhododendron, very comfortable growing within a pH of 4.5 to 5.5. And patients need that higher pH range. And then loblolly pine is, has, a, has a very, or what we call a broad pH range, okay? So it can be grown, as you can see, in a, in a wider, pH range. Hydrangea. The pH will determine the color given the presence of aluminum. So we know that aluminum is a micro, what we call a micronutrient, and most micronutrients are more available at lower pHs. So in this case, we want to put aluminum sulfate into the soil. The aluminum at 4.5 is taken up in very large amounts by the plant. If I had 
a pH of 7 and I was trying to get the aluminum to be taken up, the pH would not allow the aluminum to be taken up by the plant. Okay. As previously mentioned, Verger offers products that are catered to specific pH requirements. What influences the pH of a substrate? Water alkalinity is the number one. The capacity of a given water source to neutralize acids in a calcium carbonate equivalent. Water pH doesn't have any significant effect on substrate pH, so water alkalinity does not equal water pH. As far as when a person, I, we go into the greenhouse many times and there is a, there is a, uh, uh, a misperception on the fact that they'll say, Brian, my pH is high, I want to get my pH down. Yes, we're going to get the pH down, but not necessarily, we have to get the alkalinity down. So the alkalinity again, remember, is the one that affects the actual pH of a substrate not the value that you read or the water pH value that you'll see on the paper. High water alkalinity will gradually increase the pH of the substrate with each irrigation. Water alkalinity, growers have the responsibility to monitor the alkalinity of the water they use. A low alkalinity around 60 to 80 is easy to manage as it will be buffered by a slightly acidic fertilizer. So at this point, if this is all the person has is 60 to 80, he does not have to be concerned about actually acid, um, adding acid injection, okay? Water alkalinity fluctuates and is affected by several factors. It's water source, whether it be well, surface, city, weather changes, then causing heavy precipitation or a drought, which then allows or causes the ponds, ponds the water to go down to start getting very dry. The precipitates leave out and change the alkalinity or even the chemical nature of the water. Even if your media's pH is perfect at the beginning of your production, a high water alkalinity will increase it unless you manage it properly. What influences the pH of, a sub, of substrates? Fertilizers. Most water soluble fertilizers have an effect on the media pH. The capacity is expressed in pounds of calcium carbonate equivalents CCE of acidity or basidity per weight unit of fertilizer. The effect varies in the form of nitrogen used to manufacture the fertilizer. Ammonium nitrogen decreases pH because there's a process called nitrification. Once the fertilizer gets into the soil, there's back soil uh, nitrogen bacteria in the soil that will break down the ammonium to a more usable nitrogen, which is nitrate. But in the process of breaking down the ammonium to a usable form, remember that hydrogen ion we saw at the beginning in the, one of the slides? Hydrogen ions are released. So every time a hydrogen uh, ion is released into the soil, the pH goes down. Whereas nitrates, they are, if you remember up there, the hydroxyl ion, which is basic, so the nitrates actually increase pH. Urea nitrogen effect depends on medium moisture and temperature because again, the nitrifying bacteria have to go through that same process to work on urea, okay? How can you manage your pH? Send your samples to our laboratory, analytical services, our technicians can test your water alkalinity, your substrate, pH, or and analyze your fertilizer. Technical services, our experts can help you analyze the results, find simple solutions that are adaptive to your production system. How can you manage pH? Fertilizer combinations, using either an acid fertilizer to compensate a moderate water alkalinity, Combine water-soluble fertilizers to offset their effects, or in cases of higher, so when we're talking moderate water alkalinities, we're talking 150 to 180, which is a moderate, but then when we're talking acid injection, we know that our alkalinities can be anywhere from 280 into the 300 plus range. Inject acid in your water to lower its alkalinity. 
Useful if your alkalinity is too high to be managed with fertilizers or if you are using a controlled release fertilizer, a CRF. The pH of growing the media is dynamic. It must be closely monitored. Berger can not only provide a growing media with a specific pH, but can also help you determine what factors are influencing the pH of your soil during production and provide helpful solutions that are adaptive to your production system and easy to integrate.